All right. So let me, uh, I move this over. Okay, so budgeting. Uh, we left off last Saturday with our with our breaking down our script and and, and uh, working towards scheduling our shoot and and pulling all our elements out and that's that's really the information you use to create your budget. Um, so that you know that that's in 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 normal process you would try to always do your script breakdown and your scheduling first and then you can build your your budget on that. Uh, there are times you don't have that luxury and you just have to use your best kind of educated guess on what things are going to cost and, and, and how much you're going to need. But if you can do your, your breakdown and, and build a, a schedule, your budget's going to be much more accurate. Uh, so today what we're going to do is we're going to pick up where we left off basically on those breakdown sheets and, or on this, this project, the Christmas chaos, and we're going to budget it. Um, there are, uh, there's many different ways things can be budgeted. Uh, generally, though, either when I've been doing budgets, either I am building a budget based on the script and based on my breakdown and based on my schedule and and based on what I know from experience or you know, I, I, I have the advantage of because I've done other projects and I have access to actuals, I can go back and look at things and say, OK, this this script is pretty much like this other project I did three years ago and, you know, art department set deck spent X amount of dollars. Okay. Yeah, I could use that. That's a, that's an accurate number. So, you know, um, you're, you're just building your budget to, okay, what's it going to cost to make this movie or make this, this short. Um, and that process is, in my opinion, the best way to do it because it's probably a little more realistic and it allows you to say, what do, what do I need to raise or what money do I need to come up with to, to make this, this project the way I wanna make it? Um, uh, now, having said that, 90% of the time, 95% of the time, I get a script and I, get, I have a talk with the producers or the directors and they say, um, you know, I wanna, we wanna make this movie and I have $50,000. That's, that's what I have. And so you have to budget to that $50,000 number, but nine times out of 10, there are things in the script that don't, you know, push it to, it doesn't fit into $50,000. So then you're going back and saying either, either we've got to cut stuff from the script or you got to come up with more money or you got to convince people for, to work for less, or, you know, you're, you're sort of jamming a, a square peg into a round hole. And, you know, that's, that's the reality of most of the budgeting I do is I'm, I'm, I'm not arguing, but I'm having ongoing discussions with a, a producer and or a director saying, I'm sorry, you just don't, you know, if you want to do this script for $50,000, um, you got to cut something. It's a little, an, an analogy I'll, I'll use a lot is, um, uh, you know, it's, it's like if you're going to go buy a house and you say, I have $200,000 to buy a house and, but your every house you're looking at is 500,000. It's just, it doesn't, it doesn't work. I mean, you just can't, can't do that. So you got to create, figure out a way to, to help them understand what they can cut or, or, and there it's, there are times you just say, I'm sorry, I mean, I'm just, this isn't going to happen. It's just not, not going to work out. Um, so for today's little exercise, I thought what we would do is go ahead and build a budget um, based on what, what elements we have, what pieces and parts are in our script and what we, you know, to, to get to a point to say, okay, what, what do we need money-wise to make a Christmas chaos? And then if there's time, I think there'll be time from there, we'll, we'll uh, backtrack a little bit and say, okay, what if I have, you know, X amount of dollars, we'll, we'll cut it a little bit and we'll say, okay, I've only got you know, I've only got this amount of money. What, what can I trim? What can I cut to, to get to that number? Um, so <clears throat> in the, um, the, other, the other part of the budgeting process that is extremely helpful but rarely happens is if you have the time and, and other crew members or department heads are willing to participate, um, the, the, the best budgeting process I've experienced and it's and it's been a very limited experience or it doesn't happen very often 
is you, you know, you get your script, you do your breakdown, you send your script, like for me on a, on a feature, if I can get it to Vince DeFelice and, and he can look at it from an art department standpoint, if I can get it to, um, you know, a, a DP of some sort, um, if I can get it to a, a, a costume designer, um, if there's heavy special effects makeup, in, in other words, if I can get the script to various department heads and they get a chance to read it, and even if I can just have a discussion with them about, okay, what's, what's the hard part here for you? What's expensive? What's, you know, what do you think that build is going to cost? What do you think, you know, that uh, special effects gag is going to cost? If I can get some feedback from, from some of the department heads, again, your budget's going to be much more accurate. Usually you don't. Usually, it, it, they don't, you know, uh, it's not because they don't want to participate, but, but usually it's, it becomes a timing issue. You, you know, you get a call and, and, and they'd like the, the budget as soon as you can. So you just kind of hammer through it and you use, you know, your, your best educated guess to what things are, are going to cost. Um, I tend to, you know, there's, and there's different philosophies out there on, on budgeting. If I'm budgeting for a client, I tend to try to be realistic. I tend to, you know, if, if in doubt, I round up a little bit. I, I, I go a little higher just because it's much easier um, to have those conversations about, you know, this is what it's realistically going to take or, or I've got a little pad in here and then we can, we can trim this if we, if we need to. So anyway, uh, for today's purposes, again, we're going to build a budget from scratch um, and for Christmas chaos. And the first thing I would do in, in this case uh, for if I were producing this short is I would uh, do my, you know, obviously read the script, break it down, do my breakdown sheets, and then I would call the director, which uh, my understanding in this case could be Juan Moss. So I would call up Juan and say, hey, Juan, let's chat about this script. And are there any, anything I need to know from a budgeting standpoint, any special tools you want to use, anything uh, is, you know, or do you have a high priced, uh, actor you want to use a, a location that's going to be more expensive than others, anything that, you know, he might be aware of, um, that will, could affect the budget. So Juan, are you still on or did he go away? I'm here. I'm here. Oh. I'm listening. So I anything in a Christmas chaos from a budgeting standpoint, if, if you were to direct this, anything that I need to know about as, as we budget it? Uh, yes. Um, there are, it is a series of oneers. So a lot of the sequences are connected together with using a Ronin. Um, and I think it was broken down because we actually did do this was broken down to three oneers to get us into the, um, into the green room scene. Okay. So that and would I, mean we will uh, need the uh, I need a steady cam or Ronin kind of a gear, but that means a lot of those folks are in every day and one of those in those shots. So it's probably probably at this stage of the process, it's safe to assume that we we probably need our entire cast and our um, all our background for both days. Yeah. So we're we're gonna as we budget it, we're gonna just it, it actually makes it easier in a sense because you don't have to figure out, okay, who, who, who do I need Saturday and who do I need Sunday? And can I cut somebody and can I save some money? You just going into it, you're going to say, okay, we need, we need everybody both days. And then, you know, when Juan mentions this Ronin or Steadicam, I mean, part of, part of being a producer is, you know, knowing the tools out there. I don't know every tool. And, and when a DP starts talking about specific pieces of equipment and this and that, I don't, you know, I don't know at all. But I know people that know, so I can call them up. And you know, if I, if in this case I wasn't quite sure what a Ronin, I mean, I'm and and I'm, you know, you you you, you could be comfortable. I think I feel like I could be comfortable just saying, I'm sorry, Juan, I don't know what a Ronin is. Can you can you explain it to me? And, you know, if I don't know what this tool is, you just I don't I've never heard of that before, um, uh, and you just ask. But having a basic general knowledge that you know a Ronin is a device that that's uh, you know allows for the camera to move smoothly through the scene and the operator walks that it's similar to a steady cam there's some there's, there's some nuances are different there's the ronin there's the the um um what's the other one the uh we use it on z nation all the time petty had one um not the ronin but the yeah the gimbal well it's they're a, they're a gimbal device but uh anyway 
there's 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 various tools out there that do the same thing um but in this case yeah we'll just we'll just go with ronan and we'll go with other people so let me uh share my screen here uh we're gonna go ahead and build this budget in google sheet again just because it's uh free and it's easy and you guys see a blank spreadsheet yeah okay so we're just gonna we're just gonna go through the process now, now there are templates out there there are and um uh i guess at some point I, I have to dig up i have an older template i maybe need to refresh it a little bit but uh or we could just use what we end up building here as a as a template um i struggled a little bit with that, that question of okay how do you how do you know all of the elements that you need to include in your budget but it, you know and then i and, and it's always good to work from a template but sometimes when you work up a template it has the things in it that you don't need or and you end up putting stuff in you know where, where you don't need it and it and then it also may have something you know not have something you need and you've missed something so the i think sometimes the best way is just to force yourself to refer back to your your sheet your your uh, breakdown and look at everything carefully and just you know go as detailed as you can and put everything put everything in um that that you can find so um i you know first thing i'm going to do is just uh title this thing so i i know what it is uh, 12 14 2020 20. i try to put a date on everything just because you know that's that's for me uh I guess that's a, a, a good time just to talk about this for a second. Uh, how you name your files, your, your, your various budgets can become important because as typically as you go through the budget process, you start with your, your first pass on your budget. It might be a prelim budget. It might be just a, you know, the first pass. And then as you have conversations with the director or you have conversations with department heads or people who are going to participate in helping you make, make your movie, um, you make adjustments. I like to keep my old budget so that I have, I always can go back and, and if I need to, I can go back and look at where I started. So I typically um, just use dates as my naming convention so that I know that my, the most recent date is the most recent budget. So if I were to update this thing, you know, on Monday, I would, uh, you know, I would keep this a Christmas chaos 1114 2020 and I would I would rename it or save as a Christmas chaos budget uh 1116 2020 so then on Wednesday when I'm talking to the director I can pull up and I know which one's my most recent one sometimes also if I'm if I if there's multiple people involved in the budgeting process a lot of times Rich Cowan and I work on budgets together if it's if if I'm the last one to work on it I'll put an MD I'll put my initials on it so i know that okay that's that was my budget and i I've, I've worked on it and then if he took it and and worked on it he would change the date and then add his initials so we know okay this was the version rich did on the 16th or whatever so it just helps you keep track now there are other people will use you know version v1 v2 v3 v4 um that's fine you know whatever again it's sort of like that that breakdown process whatever works for you um you know is 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 fine it just you know um especially if if it's a budget you're building for a short and it's really your budget and you you don't not necessarily going to send it out to a client or anything it's just kind of however whatever works for you is the way to do it um so Mark, this is kind of a like a uh, maybe it's a google docs question but it's can you save as in Google, can you make that uh, you know save it as something else? Because I know when you when you make changes in here, they're automatically saved in Google. Yeah. Um, or would you have to copy it? I think in, I think in this case you may have to copy the whole thing and paste it. But I thought there was a way. I mean, it's it's not important to the budgeting aspect other than just. Yeah, 
I think I think in this case, what I would do probably is um, I would probably uh, make a, a new one, a new spreadsheet, mm -hmm. and then just copy, you know, copy everything on this spreadsheet over to the other one. We can do it at the end. I'll, I'll we'll we'll get there. And I did. I have already. I've kind of pre-built the budget because to sit here and type everything out is going to be laborious. You're not going to watch all that. So um, I'm going to bounce back and forth, and so you'll kind of get a peek at at the budget. But you know what I typically would do is you know start with my my header. Uh, I'm just going to copy and paste, and I would just type in you know a, a Christmas chaos. It's going to be a two day shoot, and and I might uh, in this case I probably would put the date again, just because if I print this out, the, the, uh, uh, I would want the date on it and, and the file name doesn't print obviously. So now I'm, I'm thinking about, okay, what do I, what do I need in this? Um, we're going to jump here for a second and just talk a little bit about, um, above the line and below the line. You're, you, you have, you basically have, um, three chunks to think about in terms of, or three segments to think about when you're when you're budgeting you have your above the line costs which above the line is the, the creative team that wrote the script the, the writer um, the producers the executive producer uh, the director uh, and all of your cast members your actors uh, your stunt performers and all the costs associated with that so on a bigger project that would include um, you know, if you were traveling a director in from out of town or an actor in from out of town, their airfare, their hotel, their per diem, uh, their ground transportation, any of the costs associated with, with the, uh, the, the creative, and, and not to say the below line people aren't creative, but in essence, that's the way it's been done for years and years and years where it's with the, you consider that, that uh, creative group that is uh, behind the, the, the project there, that's the above the line people. The below the line are, are the craftsmen. They're, they're the grip and electric, the wardrobe, hair and makeup, camera department, transpo, uh, sound, locations, catering, all the elements that, that are um, uh, you know, needed to make the movie. Um, then you have post-production, editing, your, your uh, color correction, post-production sound, music, all the elements that after the after the movie shot that you have to do in, in post. So, uh, so we, typically, if I'm building a budget, I'll start with above the line because those are are things I know. So I know in this basically from our from our breakdown, I've got these cast members. I got these seven cast members that are going to be in this movie, right? So I'm gonna I'm gonna start by saying, okay, here's my cast members. Whoops. Uh, I just make sure I got it at C. Here's my cast members, and and I'm gonna just plug them in just right here. So this is, and I'm gonna say cast. Okay, I got my cast members now. As I'm building this, I need to probably look at a little bit of how uh, I've structured this. Um, so uh, when I when I build a script, I try to lay it out, or I'm sorry, a budget. I try to lay it out so I can see things nice and easy and, and where things are. So uh, I end up creating these columns like this. In fact, I think I'm just gonna work from here. So um, we know from our, our breakdown sheet that our cast members are gonna all work both days, all work two days. And I haven't had a discussion with anybody, but I'm, I'm making some assumptions that since Jenny has to work the hardest, um, and again, I'm, I'm looking at this in this budgeting process from the standpoint of being, um, uh, you know, uh, 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 friends helping me out make the shorts. Not, I'm not going to pay everybody what probably they should be paid and what they're worth necessarily because they're going to, uh, they're friends and they're going to do me a favor and help me out here. But I'm going to pay them something. I'm going to, I'm going to make it so they've got some kind of money in their pocket. So I got Jenny and she's going to work two days. And when I, when I build this, I'm trying to think of how I can do this. Maybe I'll, I'll do it over here like I would. Um, I don't know. I think I'm getting, am I getting lost in the weeds here or are we doing all right? 
You're doing all right. So I got above the line, cast, I kind of make that a little smaller. I make this a little smaller, so I will move them over to column C. We want them to be flush left. All right, so Jenny's going to work two days, and I'm going to pay her 200 bucks. And that's just at this point a bit of a guess. There's the money thing. And I'm going to say this equals two that uh, cell D14 times F14. Whoops, I got an error. I should have added that extra. So she's getting 400 bucks. Now, once you start kind of creating your formulas and you get your base formula done, like in this case, your you know, column D times column F, now you can just take that, copy it, and paste it for the rest of them, and then go through and think about it. Now, in, in this case, I, I, in my head, I went, okay, Mr. McLachlan, he's not in quite as much, and, and he's, a, he's a really good friend of mine, so he'll, you know, I, I, and I actually called him up and said, hey, if, would you work for a couple of days at 50 bucks a day, or just a little gas money and something, and he, you know, he's like, yeah, no, no, no problem. Um, uh, she's a little more stubborn. She wants a hundred bucks. The two Marley brothers, um, they're unique and specific. And, and I want this, these two very specific guys. And I've talked to them and they're 150 each. Uh, Inga's uh, another really good friend. She's 50. And uh, Miss Cratchit's a, a, a well-known um, uh, actress in town. And she's pretty experienced and, and just out of respect to her, I'm, I'm gonna pay her a couple hundred bucks. So I might go ahead and, and center those numbers. And I just, again, the layout becomes whatever is, um, whatever works for you, you know, what, whatever little, you know, idiosyncrasies you might have or weird, you know, I have weird things about, um, you know, lines and just the way things are. So it just becomes, uh, you know, like, where that came from, I don't know, but we'll figure it out. Anyway, now I'm going to total this. So, because I, I like to, I like to have a subtotal of my my different departments, my different uh, different areas. I might bring that over there. And there's a sum here, and we can just sum this. Uh, I'm not as familiar with. So I know my cast, I've got it budgeted now, it's gonna cost me 1800 bucks. Um, so I probably have to pay the screenwriter a little bit. So I'm gonna insert some rows here. And I'm gonna add script Let me see what I did over here. Yeah. So I'm just going to copy these just to speed things up a little bit here. So I've got I've got the script. I've got uh, I got to I got to buy the script from the 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 author for story rights, and I'm going to pay him 200 bucks. I I should get it copyrighted with the United States Copyright Office. It's not a hard process. You can just do it online. I think it's 90 bucks. I don't know. Maybe you remember Jennifer better than I, but I think it's around 90 bucks. Maybe I'll make it a hundred just to, to uh, cover myself. And then I probably, I'm going to try to go as electronic as possible in making this, but um, some, some actor, somebody's going to want a hard copy of the script. So I'm going to say, I'm going to, I'm going to budget five scripts to be, to, to have hard copies of it. And then probably, you know, I copy machine, you know, it might cost me two bucks each or yeah, two bucks per script. So I might spend 10 bucks on script. So I got a total for my story to buy the, buy the script and copyright it and make some copies. I got 310 bucks into it. Okay. So now I'm probably going to have some producers and a, and a director, you know, again, pretty, pretty simple project. And maybe they're, they're going to be the same person, but let's just say in this case, they're not. So I've got a, a producer, director, and some miscellaneous costs. <clears throat> 
my producer, I'm going to give him a couple hundred bucks to help me out and, and, and make it come together. And my director, since it's one, it's 50 bucks. And then um, you always have, there's always going to be some cost you couldn't, some, some, some expense you couldn't predict, you couldn't understand where it's going to come from, or you just don't know about it. And, you know, and the, the best example I can think of, and it wouldn't, it wouldn't be necessary for Christmas chaos, but you know, there's many, many times we're outside. In fact, the movie we shot a, a year ago this summer that Juan directed, uh, um, Home Sweet Home, we were out in the valley, we we're shooting outside at this house. And um, I don't know about, uh, well, maybe, maybe a block away, a guy was out mowing his lawn. He just, you know, he just afternoon, even late, late afternoon, mowing his lawn, no big deal. Well, it's, it affects our sound and we can't really shoot with the lawnmower going in the background. So I run over there and say, hey, buddy, can you, we're shooting a movie over here. Can you do me a favor? If I give you 50 bucks, will you go inside and watch some TV and hang out for an hour while we finish shooting? And nine times out of 10, they're like, yeah, no problem. I mean, there's a couple of times you get, you get some people that just aren't very cooperative or don't want to help you out and tell you to you know, screw off. But uh, most of the time, you can convince them. And sometimes you don't even need money, but money is definitely a great motivator. So I always like to put a little bit of money in, in various places, just kind of miscellaneous cost that you just can't predict, you don't know about. And in this case, I put it in uh, with the producer and director. So that, that, that account, that budget account has um, 450 bucks in it. So I'm just gonna delete a couple rows here so that I can, uh, Two's rolls and keep that. I'm going to do a real quick fix here. Get rid of these borders. And you'll learn tricks like, you know, in, in Excel and in, uh, in this spreadsheet, like uh, I'm, I'm on an Apple. So Apple or command Y just repeats the, whatever you, you did previously. So you can, you can end up just, if you've done a function, you can repeat it multiple times. Uh, and it's a little easier than going back and forth and up and down to. If you wanted to get rid of all the lines and the whole thing, you can click in the corner of the spreadsheet and then just. Yeah, yeah, but I like having some lines. Okay. And, and little things. For me, I mean, I like I like being consistent. If I'm all caps, or and it, it just becomes again whatever whatever works for you. Um, it looks like I uh, I ended up having an extra column here. Let me just move that over. Um, I generally try to think of my columns in terms of of um, you know how many how many the amount or how many I need, what they are, days, um, you know, scripts, whatever they are. And sometimes you just put allow. So that's just an allowance. It, it just, it's covered. That's like all in. That's the total cost, um, the, the, the dollar amount per unit. And then, you know, again, what, what they are each or uh, allow and then your total, your, your money. Uh, all right. So let me jump back over to this other thing. So I'm just going to quickly copy that. So in this case, there are no stunts. There are no stunts. Um, and then I just Again, another miscellaneous, I, this probably isn't, may, maybe uh, as I refine my budget, I look at this and say, you know what, I've got miscellaneous twice. I'm going to go ahead and just, I'm going to leave, I'm going to leave it in there, but I'm going to zero it out. So right now I don't have miscellaneous in there, but I have a miscellaneous down here. So this is just miscellaneous above the line, 200 bucks. So now my total above the line is going to be the, each one of these totals, H18 plus H24 plus H34, plus H38. Even if it's a zero, I, I, I add it to the, the, the formula so that if I come back later and all of a sudden, if the director comes along and says, you know what, we want, uh, we want Inga to fall down in the hallway. Uh, oh, I need a stunt 
coordinator there. I need some kind of, you know, help to make sure that, that she's protected and she's safe. So I add it back in. Um, so I have it there and it just, it just goes into the formula. Uh, and then uh, H42. So my total above the line is 2560. Okay. So now I start building on, working on below the line. And below the line is going to be, you know, I'm going to have some production staff. I'm going to have, uh, I ended up, uh, yeah. I'm just going to copy this all over. So below line, I know, I know I'm going to have some, I'm going to have some PAs on set to help, help move things around. I'm going to have three of them. So that's a total of six man days, three, three PAs times two days gets your six. And you can, I, I, I build the formula sometimes just so I can refer, how did I, you know, it helps me like if uh, a month later I've come back this, you know, I've, I've done this budget and the project goes to the side for a little while and I've done three other budgets in between and all of a sudden uh, Juan calls up and says, hey, a Christmas chaos is back on. And I pull up this budget and start reviewing. It's like, where did I get that six from? Oh yeah, oh yeah, two days, three PAs, that makes sense. So, and I'm gonna just pay them gas money, basically 25 bucks a day. They're gonna need a few supplies just to, to, uh, to you know, uh, might be just some simple uh, paper and pen stapler. I don't know, there, there's gonna be supplies needed. And, and I, again, in the production staff, I threw in some miscellaneous just, just to help if something comes up that's needed. Um, I've got my silent extras. If you remember from our, our breakdown sheet, you know, we've got these three uh, silent extras. So I, I'm going to put those in there and I'm going to pay their, their friends of mine. They're just doing me a favor. They're going to, but they're going to, I need them both days and I'm going to give them 25 bucks each a day. We talked about uh, our, our atmosphere background or atmosphere extras. We're gonna have 10 actors back there that just mill around on the stage. I'm gonna pay them $20 each. So I got two days and I've got 10 times 20, 10 actors times 20 bucks each. So that's 200 bucks a day. I'm gonna spend $400 on, on those 10 people. All right, we got, we got art department. Gonna need somebody, some help. Um, with those funky, uh, the, the, the funky props and the funky uh, wardrobe and where, where it sits and how it, how it fits into the scene. And, and, and those, as time goes on, those are conversations that, that the director would have with the set decorator about what they want. Um, on a bigger project, you would have a production designer that would work with the, the director and then, and then uh, communicate with the set decorator and prop master and those people and what they want. But in this case, with the, the short and a a two-day project. I just had a, a set decorator, and actually, is now after I've built this, I'm thinking about it. Going, you know what? Um, they're going to need a day just to get things together, just to organize their world. So I better, I better make that three days. That's a day of prep and two shooting days. And I don't know this, you know, this gal as well as others. So I, I got to pay her a hundred bucks a day because she's not that good of a friend, and she's not willing to do me a whole bunch of favors. And I've got to purchase some stuff. So my hundred bucks to purchase, I probably better up that. I'm going to make that 250, uh, just based on the script and based on knowing there probably needs to be some unique uh, elements there on, on the stage. Um, and again, thinking through it, I'm going to I'm going to say to myself, well, we're probably going to shoot this on an actual stage at a theater. So maybe maybe I can work into the the location agreement. That I can use some of their props and set decks. So you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna knock that back down to, to 200 bucks. Uh, prop master gonna need a prep day, so let's make that three days. Um, again, I don't know this person very well, so I'm gonna pay him 100 bucks a day. And again, I can probably use some of the stuff at the stage and uh, or the location, but I, I'm gonna up this to 150 because they're again in the script. There it says unique props, unique. Um, uh, you know, I, items on set. Um, again, in this, this particular, um, I'll tell you where this kind of came from, this miscellaneous concept or, or adding it in almost every account. Working on Z Nation for five years, um, over time, it just became apparent that pretty much every department at some point in time had some kind of a random uh, uh, 
missed a meal and needed some food, uh, a gas receipt, just had, had to, had to you know, drive their own vehicle around town to find some particular piece of art. Uh, just you know, costs you don't necessarily uh, itemize or you don't, it, it just, you, you can't necessarily pinpoint that yes, they're gonna happen. Um, but it just gives you a little wiggle room and a little, a little pad. So I try to put some, some miscellaneous in various departments just to cover my butt so that if the prop master comes along and, and it, it allows you too to say, if a prop master comes along and says, hey, I know I only have 150 bucks for purchases and rentals, but I found this really funky, cool thing that I showed it to Juan and he loves it and it's $25. Can I, can I go over budget by you know, uh, $25? And it's like, well, I've, yeah, I've got that miscellaneous. I got a little pad there. I can use that. Um, so that's why I try to include that. So my art department's going to be a thousand bucks. Then I got gripped and electric. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep the crew pretty small. I'm going to have just a, a key grip and I'm, and I'm, and in this case, I'm going to say they don't, they don't really need any prep. They could just show up on the day. Um, uh, they're going to probably ask for prep, but in this case, I'm going to say, Hey, Hey, can you do me a favor and just work the prep on your own time or whatever you need to do to be ready, but show up these two days and we'll have some equipment. Um, I'm, um, I've got really good friends at North Northwest productions and I've asked them if I could just, you know, use some of their gear and flip them a hundred bucks just to cover any wear and tear. And they've said, yes. Um, gaffer, uh, I'm going to uh, gaffer. I'm going to, I'm going to add a prep day because, and, and I'm, I've, there's a specific gaffer I want to use and I, and I, uh, he's more experienced and he's been around a little more and I want to pay him just a little bit more to make sure I can get him. So I'm going to up him to 150 and then, uh, lighting equipment again, I've got good friends at Northwest and, and I've just said, Hey, can I, can I just use some minimal lighting? I'm not going to go crazy, but to use some of your lights and uh, just cover a little bit of wear and tear again, miscellaneous. So my grip and electrics, 900 bucks, special effects. I've got, there's no special effects in, in this show. As far as I'm concerned, I, I don't see anything that would, to me would be a special effect. Um, so that's at zero. Uh, vehicles and animals. We know from our breakdown, we got the hamster, tiny, tiny Tim, that little guy. Um, this is a guess. I don't know. I, I don't know where you, I don't think there's going to be a trained hamster out there. So I'm probably going to go to Northwest Seed and Pet and buy one. Um, and I, and I guess if, if I were, yeah, I, I would probably call Northwest Seed and Pet and say, hey, how much is a hamster? But I'd probably buy two of them because I might, um, I might, one might get away. I don't know. One might. So I don't think, I think 250 seems a little high from when I first did this budget. So I'm going to knock, I don't know. What does a hamster cost? 50 bucks, 20 bucks, 10 bucks. I'm going to, I'm going to say I can get two hamsters. I'm going to get, I'm going to get two and they're going to be 25 each. So it's going to, I'm going to spend 50 bucks on my hamsters. Uh, wardrobe. So we're going to, we're going to have to clothe these people, but we're going to ask most of them to kind of wear their own clothes or, or bring their own clothes. But there, there are a couple of, because the script, again, the script calls for some unique racks of wardrobe and some funky stuff. I'm going to have to have a little bit of money. So I've got a costume designer. And again, I probably, yeah, there's two days of shoot, but she probably, or he or she probably needs a day of prep. In fact, uh, because, because there's unique elements, I'm going to say they need four days of prep or two days of prep and two days of shooting. And actually what may happen in reality is I would talk and say, look, use, um, use a day and a half of prep, two days of shooting and use a half day at the end to put things away. Cause you got to deal with, with, uh, uh, you know, getting restoring stuff or putting it away or whatever you're going to do that. You can't just walk away and leave it, leave it. Um, again, because our location is a theater, uh, I'm hopeful that I can use some of their wardrobe and, and that, that can be augmented. So I'm, I'm going to throw a couple hundred bucks, $250 into uh, purchases and rentals, just so I have some money there to, if I need to buy something specific or rent something specific, uh, I've, I've got a little budget for it. Total for wardrobe, 900 bucks. Again, my miscellaneous column. Um, Hair and makeup, uh, you know, on a on a bigger shoot, on a, on a typically on a, on a union shoot in particular, there's a, a, a separate hair uh, uh, stylist and then a makeup artist. There are two different categories um, on a, a on a short like this, or and uh, if I were budgeting a project like this, I would ask uh, 
uh, Natasha or, or uh, Alex or you know, Alexis, if they'd be willing to do both hair and makeup. And nine times out of 10, most of the folks that do hair and makeup do both. Um, now, this particular script doesn't have any special effects makeup, but like on, on Z Nation, where we had a lot of special effects makeup, there were, there were people that only did special effects makeup. They didn't do beauty. Um, but you know, most of the time, a, 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 a makeup artist can do hair and a hairstylist can do two makeup. So in this case, I just had one person. I don't really think they needed any prep. I mean, usually they just can show up in the day and I'm gonna pay them 150 bucks. Um, now, because we wanna do some funky things with <clears throat> some of our, um, some of our cast members, I'm gonna, you know, allow, I don't think we need 250, but <clears throat> I'm gonna put a little money in for, you know, a cheap wig or, um, uh, you know, some product if they wanna spike some hair, just to give her a little bit of room to, to respond to whatever uh, the director might ask for in terms of a, a specific look. <coughs> Excuse me. So my hair, hair and makeup uh, is gonna cost 500 bucks. Camera department, you gotta, <coughs> gotta have a camera department. So I, I've got a DP, um, I've got a good, good friend of mine that's gonna help me out and wanna work with me and, and make the movie. I'm gonna add a, a prep day though for that person. Actually, I'm gonna add two <coughs> because I'm gonna wanna spend time with them uh, storyboarding and, and working out, um, you know, these wanters and how we're actually going to do that and, and kind of the choreography of, of making that happen. Uh, so I'm going to, uh, I'm not going to pay them very much per day, but I'm going to work them for four days and, and the prep days won't be long days. So it, it'll work out. And then usually, you know, even on a, a smaller shoot in my mind, it's, it's very helpful to have a, a, a camera assistant, somebody to help the DP, um, you know, sometimes you'll get, um, you'll get DPs or cinematographers that are extraordinarily talented in lighting and, and, uh, the composition of, of the frame. Um, but they don't know the technology of the equipment that well, they don't know, you know, what, what plugs into what and how does this work? So, uh, I've got, uh, an assistant camera person to help them. And <coughs> most of the time, uh, they're going to want a day of prep. So I'm, I'm and I'm going to give it to them in this case, we're still, we're budgeting. We're looking at this again, remember our basis of saying, what do we need to make, you know, to, we're not going to go extravagant, but what do we need to do this right? And a, really to do it right, a day of prep from the camera system would probably be good. Um, I'm going to probably ask them just to give me the, the half a day of wrap that it'll probably take to put everything away. Um, and uh, again, it's another, I know this person pretty well and, and they're going to do me a favor. So we're good there. Uh, camera equipment, uh, I, I, the DP <coughs> has his own gear and between the camera assistant and, and the DP, they're, they're good friends. They've worked together a lot. They have all the gear I need and I'm going to, uh, I, they've agreed to let me have it all for a couple hundred bucks, 250 bucks. I do need some hard drives cause I want to make sure that um, you know, when we uh, we shoot it, we got to download to something, and then <clears throat> my end product too. I can't remember if I put there. There might be some drives in, in post, but we'll see when we get there. But I'm gonna allow a, a couple hundred bucks just to buy buy some hard drives and uh, some some miscellaneous. Always fifty. Now, as we as we heard at the beginning of this, um, the director Juan has requested that these wanners be shot with a Ronin. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and add uh, a line here. Um, I'm gonna insert a row, and I'm just gonna call it special equipment. And I know that uh, CMTV Community Minded Television uh, has a Ronin, and um, Deshawn usually operates it, and I and I, I think. You know, I can't remember. I probably, you know, frankly, if I were doing this budget, I would call them up and just say, "Hey, I'm doing this short. Can you help me out on this? I need you and your Ronan, and I'm gonna, I'm needed. I need you for two days. What, what's going to cost me?" And I don't know. He probably, I'm hoping he's going to do it for a couple hundred bucks a day. And like I say, I would have that conversation with him as I as I find to my budget. But I'm gonna put 200 bucks a day in there for the Ronan and operator. 
now I got to change my sum here. Now this is this is something to keep in mind as you're as you're working in Excel or in sheets, you know, any of these spreadsheets. If you like in this case, I added a row after miscellaneous. And so my sum now does not include that row. You can see what it includes. So I want to make sure that I extend my box that covers the sum, that the total of that group. So I include everything. It's um, it's one of those things that'll catch you. You'll you'll go through and you're double checking things, and and all of a sudden you realize, oh shoot, I don't, I didn't sum that whole group, and I I missed that. So that's a, that's one of those things that gets, you know, you can you can miss if you add a row. And that's why you know, frankly, I probably should. If I were doing this right, I would uh, actually insert this row here. Yeah. I did it wrong. Insert row above. I would insert that row there. Again, it's one of my little weirdnesses. I like consistency, and so I like miscellaneous is always the last item. Uh, so there, I just swapped that around. All right. So uh, this short's going to be nothing without sound. You got to have sound is just as important as, as the picture without sound. You know, you're, you know, unless you're doing a silent movie, you don't have much. So you, you need a, uh, you know, somebody to, to capture the sound um, again on a, on a, on most projects, eh, probably 75% of what I've worked on. There's a, there's, it's a two person crew. There's a mixer and a boom operator, two, two people. But on a on a short and 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 on uh, any number of I've done many uh, smaller projects that the mixer and the boom is the same person they 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 have a you know fanny pack or like the the mixing console is in a pouch and is on their chest and then they they boom so in this case I'm gonna I've got a you know, a person I know that can mix and boom and I'm gonna see if they'll work for 150 bucks for two days and yeah they will so I'm I plug that in. And they've got a little, you know, I got to give them a little money for their equipment. And, and I think um, 50 bucks is probably a little low. So I'm going to up that to 100 just so they have, you know, a, a little walking around money and, and then miss it. They're going to need batteries. They're going to need, there's, there's all these miscellaneous things that sound guy needs. Um, location fees. You know, uh, I've talked to Civic Theater. I gave them a call and, and uh, they said, yeah, we can, we can use the place on a weekend especially right now during uh, the COVID pandemic, there's, there's no theater going on and, and they would love any money they could make, uh, but they do have to have uh, somebody with us um, that represents the theater that you know, opens the place and then can help us if we need lights on or off or just whatever we need. And they need a little bit of money. So um, those two days are gonna cost us 150 bucks each, that's $300. And I still threw a little miscellaneous there, you know, maybe, somebody knocks over a lamp in the green room or, you know, there's something gets busted. And so we have to have a little loss and damage, a little L and D. Um, I want to, I want to feed these people. Um, uh, and I want to, you know, buy them, buy them a lunch both days. Um, so I just, you know, uh, on bigger, bigger spreadsheets or other templates I've used, I've, I've created a, um, a formula that calculates this for me as I as I add things up. But in this case, it was just manual. I mean, I just went back up and, and you know counted the people. Okay, I got one, two, three, four, five. You know, just count them up. How many? And I counted thirty four. So I got thirty four people. I got to feed. I got to feed them two days. So thirty four times two, I got to come up with sixty eight meals. So I'm gonna, and I'm going to go to I don't know Jimmy John's or uh, you know maybe Panera something uh, you know. Um, Olive Garden, something, but I'm, but I'm going to budget 15 bucks per meal. So I'm going to spend a thousand dollars on food, which you know, a lot of times when you're, you know, it, it's it's so true that the if if you feed a crew well, even even on the bigger show, even on Z Nation, when we fed fed the crew well, it it makes a difference. It keeps them happy. So you know, if you don't, <clears throat> so it's an area. It's a bit of a pet peeve of mine because I I'm a little old school, and I look at back, <clears throat> you know, at the the guys that worked at the Kaiser uh, Mead aluminum plant and you know they they came to work and they brought their lunch and if they needed a snack they went to the vending machine and 
you know, and th those guys are working way harder than when we are, but you know, they kept it to an eight hour day and we, we work long days. So you feed the crew well and you take care of them. I'm almost out of vodka. Um, so then uh, also some snacks and water, you know, I, I, again, you don't have to go crazy with craft services, but having a few snacks around some power bars, some stuff that people can munch on, um, you know, throw a couple hundred bucks a day that, yeah, that may be a little high, but some water, some snacks. Yeah. I'd probably knock that down to 150. Um, don't buy beef jerky. That's expensive. Don't buy Red Bull. It's expensive. You know, look, go to Spokane discount and, buy your snacks and water and um, you know, you can keep that number uh, down at a reasonable, reasonable number. <clears throat> All right. So I think that's, that's everything I could think of in terms of my below the line. I mean, somebody jump in and if, if you think I've missed something, but that gets me, you know, that gets me my, some PAs on set to help me. It's got my background performers in there. I've got a little bit of art department to make sure the place looks right. Grip and electric to, to make it, you know, to take care of that side of everything. There's no effects. I got that little uh, hamster in there, some clothing for everybody, some hair and makeup for everybody. I got a camera department that can shoot this thing with some hard drives and I got the special equipment in there. I can capture sound. I got a location and I'm gonna feed everybody. So right now my below the line, now let's see if that changed that one. I just double check everything that it captured all the below the line numbers and uh, it did. So my below line, line is 82.70. Mark, my question is about insurance. So, Insur I mean, I know, I know that, you know, on a little short, there still, uh, there still would be insurance, especially if you're borrowing equipment from anyone. Yeah. Even if they give it to you for nothing or for very little, they're going to expect insurance. Right. Insurance, I I have traditionally just put on a top sheet. It hasn't been a separate account. Um, I guess the way I look at this is when um, when an account, and that's how I refer to this, like script is an account, producer director is an account, cash is an account. When a, an account has multiple entries, then I bring it to either the above the line area or below the line. If it's just a single entry and you know, now I'm contradicting myself because the animals is just one line. But for me, historically, um, insurance has been on the, on the top sheet and I'll, I'll show you that when we get to the end. Okay. Okay. Um, all right. So now I got my post-production, which we'll just copy and paste this over. I got to edit the, the project. So I got to have an editor and some equipment and um, editing is, you know, it, it's, it's, if you're doing a, uh, a bigger project, a, a union project, many, many times the contract specifies how many weeks or how many days of editing are, are the minimum for a project. You know, in this case on a short um, it's, you know, uh, Frankly, I, I wouldn't really know how many days it takes unless I talked to an editor and said, what do you think you need? It's going you know, to be about, you know, it's a, what, what was it, an eight or nine page script. You know, so it's probably a, you know, eight, nine minute project. What do you think? So I, I just, in, when I was building this earlier, I just said, okay, I'm going to, you know, basically a, a page a day of editing and a little bit of extra. So I, I plugged in 10 days, two weeks. Um, and I'm going to, pay this editor 150 bucks a day. Um, hopefully that, that covers what I need. And again, I would probably have the conversation with the editor. So I have uh, my, my budget was a little more precise, but um, this is a, a good place to start. And then, you know, you, they, they, go ahead. sorry, I was gonna say, would you adjust that when the director tells you that they're all winners? Um, yeah, up to the green room, but they're still, material or after that i might i might yeah i might say okay that's a good point rebecca that since that since the first uh what three or four pages are are oneers uh okay i'm gonna make that eight days i'm gonna save a little money thank you rebecca <laughs> um you know they got a computer and some software so you got to pay them a little bit for their uh, their editing equipment and then they too i i guess i didn't put any 
food or snacks, but this miscellaneous, if they needed a, you know, something that just covers a little bit, you don't, you don't have to feed them, um, you know, on a union shoot you do, but um, in this case, you would just say, just go down to the refrigerator and make a sandwich. Um, now I gotta, you gotta, you know, do a little sound design on this and, and, um, and some music. So I just put in, you know, again, I've got some contacts that will help me out here. And uh, I've talked to them and they're gonna, they're gonna do some music for 500 bucks and sound design for 500 bucks. So I get my post-production total of $2,800. Okay. So now I've got my three elements done, uh, my, um, my above the line, my below the line and my post-production. And now typically a, um, a budget will have what's called a top sheet, which, which allows somebody in, in a, a, you know, to look at it and say, okay, this is, this is the summary of this, um, of this budget. It's not the detail, but it gives me the information I need to know basically what this, uh, this short's gonna cost. So my top sheet, and we're gonna add a couple items to it, just brings over the uh, above the line total, which for some reason, because we added that uh, above the line total, is that below the line total, is H136 and my post-production total is H153. Now I'm gonna add a couple things here. Uh, row below. I'm gonna add insurance. Insurance is going up. Um, I have never purchased in, uh, insurance for a, for a short or for a two day project. It, it's typically based on the overall budget. Um, uh, typically you're looking at about, um, let me just think for a second, you know, like one, one and a half percent of the overall budget, you know, like on a, on a $2 million movie, you probably will spend about 25 or 30 on insurance someplace in that area on, on a smaller project on a budget like this. I'm, I'm not exactly sure, but let's just, let's just say it's going to be $1,500. We'll just, and, and again, if I were truly budgeting this for, um, for the purpose of figuring out what do I need to, to make this short, I would, I would call an insurance broker and, and talk to them about it and say, okay, this is what I'm doing. What am I, what am I looking at for costs of insurance? Um, and that's about the right price, Mark. It's um, you can get a uh, locally, you can get it around for two, for 2000 and have it for the full year. So you could reuse it a couple of times. Right. Right. Um, so it's around that 15 to 2000 numbers where you're right. Okay. All right. It also depends on what all you're insuring. Cause I know when we did our, our weekend shoot and we were using all North Buys equipment plus we had vehicles in there. It was about $900 two years okay. ago. Okay. So you're totally in the ballpark. In the ballpark. Um, Ron, what, what company is that locally that you're talking about? I don't have the name in front of me, but I know their office is um, uh, right in the, in the same space as this is, is, the, is the symphony's office in the Fox theater. They have a little office there. We've used okay. it for smaller programs. Oh, huh. okay, cool. Yeah, because I like I have I have insurance for you know I've, I've got some transportation equipment. I have insurance through Hub Hub International Hub, and that's where we generally our insurance comes from uh, for production insurance. There's only really, really, uh, uh, on in the big uh, on a bigger project. There's only like two or three companies out there that insure. I mean, it's Fireman's Fund, Lord Lords of London, and there's one other one. So the there isn't a lot of uh, production insurance companies out there. Um, I have a question. Sure. So when you are looking at insurance, aside from just insurance of the project, um, 
Do you guys look at, are you guys looking at insurance for equipment as well? Do you, you, do you expect your DP to insure their own equipment? Do you insure their equipment plus everything else? I mean, when you're doing something small like this, because I've done both and I'm just curious what your, what your thoughts are on that. Do you just do a full insurance of all the equipment? Yeah, I would try to do a full insurance of all the equipment because again, especially if I'm, I'm, I'm basically asking these people to, to help me out here. Right. I'm not, I'm not paying them the going rate. And, and even if I were, it's like, okay. Um, it, it gets, it gets a little gray because you right. know, it gets back to that concept of kit rentals. You know, when, yeah. when, um, the way I look at it is, is if, um, uh, let's use Jennifer as an example, Jennifer uses her own computer, uh, when she's, a a, a second AD. Um, so we I pay her, we pay her a kit rental for the use of that computer. That computer's in her care and control and she's using it at all times. If she breaks her computer, if she drops her computer, it's on her. In my mind, because it's, it's hers, she's getting a kit rental. And if it busts, it's, it's up to her to replace it. If I rent it from her, if I say, I'm going to rent your computer and I'm going to give it to Rebecca and Rebecca is going to use it for accounting and then Rebecca drops it and wrecks it, I got to, I'm going to replace it. Yep. Okay. So in this case with the DP, he owns his own equipment. Um, in theory, I could pay him, I could call it a kit rental and say, Hey dude, I'm going to pay you a kit rental. And if the camera busts, uh, it's not my problem. It's your fault. It's your, your problem. But that's kind of, you know, again, you're asking him to do a, a favor and he's helping you out. So right. I would, I would look at if I'm buying insurance, I would say, let's get insurance that covers everything and provide him a, a cert, a certificate of insurance that says, you know, that shows that we have insurance. And then if, if it busts, I'd file a claim. Gotcha. All right. So I've got a, I got a $15,000 project here. I, I, I typically would like to add a little contingency, even though I've gone through and I've got some miscellaneous here and there. I've got some money built into this budget that allows me to, um, to cover some unknown costs. It's, you, you always want a contingency if you, if you can afford it. And it can range from, you know, uh, again, on a bigger, you know, like SAG wants a 10% contingency, which is kind of ridiculous. I generally go anywhere, you know, five to 8%. Um, you know, sometimes it's a, it's a way small one. But in this case, let's just see if see what happens if we if we plug in a a um, five percent uh, contingency. So I'll just I'll just take my total and uh, multiply it by five percent, and now I have a new a new total uh, with the contingency. Um, of fifteen thousand eight eighty six. So. I need to go to dad and say, dad, can I have $16,000 to make my short? And dad says, uh-uh, you're crazy. I'll give you, uh, I don't know, maybe I'll give you um, 12. And you say, okay, 12. So what, what can I, now, now we're, we're kind of moving. This, this, this previous exercise was, what does it take to make the movie? And now this is the reality of, okay, I still want to make this movie but I only have $12,000. How can I, how can I do that? Can I do that? And, I'm, and if I start cutting and I'm, am I going to, um, am I going to cut into the bone, so to speak, and hurt the, the creative element of this project uh, or the, the potential creative success? Am I going to, am I going to hurt the project? So let's start looking at it. Um, I, I'm going down and, and saying to myself, you know what? This is my my project. I wrote it, and I'm smart enough. I can produce it. I'm gonna get. Rid, I'm not gonna hire a producer. I'm still gonna hire a director. I'm gonna pay Juan fifty bucks to help me out. It's gas money, but I'm gonna produce it myself. Um, and I'm only gonna. I'm gonna say sorry, folks. Um, we're in an electronic world. We're also trying to, you know, be re, uh, respectful of the environment. I'm gonna. Uh, there'll be one copy of the script around. And everybody else has to um, has to just deal with it. And since uh, well, I don't care, she wrote it, so I got to pay her. But I'm a, I'm gonna call up uh, uh, the writer and say, hey, I'm sorry, I, I, my dad, you know, he's only gonna give me twelve thousand. I gotta I gotta shave some stuff. Can I shave fifty bucks off off your fee? Yeah, okay. She says, yeah, that's no problem. 
I want to kind of maintain my cast because I don't want to, you know, that's good, good acting. Well, let me put it this way. Bad acting will kill your short. It'll kill your movie. If you have bad actors, you're dead. So I, I probably want to try to maintain this if I can for now, uh, because I want to make sure my actors are good and they're happy. Um, and I've, uh, I've taken care of them. Um, I'm going to go ahead and knock this miscellaneous and above the line miscellaneous half. I'm just going to, um, I'm, I'm producing myself. So I'm going to be really tight and watch every dollar and make sure that we got everything taken care of. Um, PAs are great. And you know what? The PAs are, I've, I've been able to get them cheap. I'm not going to, I'm not going to mess with that. I'm still going to keep three PAs for now. Uh, some supplies, just going to cut that in half. Uh, I'm going to leave those alone because there's not much there. Okay. Um, really, I can't cut that. That's, that's not much. Um, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, now that I know dad will only give me 12,000, I'm going to go, go back to civic theater and I'm going to go visit them in person. And I'm going to see what they have in the back room and see what kind of props and and I'm going to find out that they have they have quite a bit of stuff. So I don't I'm not going to need to purchase maybe as much as I thought I was going to be. So I'm just going to knock those down to 50 bucks each, shave a little bit there because I, because I can find everything I need at the Civic Theater. Uh, I've I've talked to this buddy of mine that's a gaffer that I wanted to try to pay a little bit more, and I explained my situation, and he's willing to knock 50 bucks off a day. To help me out, um, I go to North Northwest and I say, "Come on, guys! I helped start the company. I was a big part of its 20 years of 30 years of success. Can I can I have the gear for free?" And they say yes. Um, still got to buy that damn hamsters or two of them. I'm still going to buy two because they're not that expensive, and I don't, you know, uh, if if we lose one, we got to have something. Uh, again, I find out it's when I visit Civic that they've got quite a bit of, of wardrobe and stuff. So I'm going to shave that down a little bit. Um, now I'm just going to check where I'm, I'm going to run up and check where I'm at. Oh, I'm 14.8. So I've got a ways to go yet. Um, I talk to my DP and say, I'm in a jam. Can you go to 100 bucks a day? Same with the camera assistant. Again, I talked to North by there. Oh, uh, I, that's right. He owns his own gear. Uh, I'm gonna. He's he's gonna help me out anymore. I'm gonna knock that down a hundred. Um, Ronan, I mean, I gotta have that. That's probably as as reasonable as he'll go right now. Again, it's just it's just continue talking to these people, explaining your situation, and seeing if you can get. Um, I don't think Civic. They're doing me a big favor. They're not gonna. They're not going to change much. Okay, I don't really think I can. I want to feed the crew, but let's let's just knock it down a buck. We'll just make sure we're as good as we can get for fourteen bucks a meal. And that's you know you can you can do a decent lunch for fourteen dollars. Uh, snacks and water again. I'm going to trim that where it's just more more water than snacks. Uh, Rebecca brings up a good point. I, I talked to my editor, I talked to the director. Uh, yeah, the Warners are gonna cover us pretty good. I'm gonna knock a day off of editing. Uh, I see if they'll come down a, a hundred bucks or so and just see if I can trim. So that's kind of just the problem. You just kind of go through and, and trim where you can. I'm at 13.7. Um, you know, I'm probably at a spot here where without cutting, without kind of changing, I mean, I, I guess I have to go back probably now to my cast and say, okay, uh, I really need, I really need you to help me here. Can you come down a little bit each day for me and, and help me out here? Um, so at 13.3, so now I, I'm, I'm back on the phone with dad and saying, look, dad, um, I know you said 12. I wanted 15. I, if I start cutting any more, um, I'm going to kill myself. Um, can, you, can you come up with 13, 13.5? 13, 
And dad says, sure, what the heck, why not? Um, so that's, you know, in essence, that's the process. Yeah. Um, uh, if dad says no, uh, you know, frankly, I don't know. I, I would probably have to say, um, I would probably have to look at this and say, okay, what skills do I have? Um, what I, what I would start to do is look and say, all right, can, I mean, I know it's just becomes one person crew, but I would get rid of my key grip and just have a gaffer and he, he, this would have to be a gaffer grip combo. I would, uh, begin to trim prep days. And that's pretty hard to not have some prep days. I would trim a PA. So we're at 12, seven um, and I'd probably in this case, as much as it pains me, lose the contingency. And so you get yourself to 12. Now, now you're in a situation though, where you, you when you're making this, you gotta be on it. You gotta be tight. You gotta be, um, you know, I might not copyright it right now. I might copyright it later. Um, but yeah, you, you would have to be very well organized, very, very well planted your, your pre-production you know, your director would have to be on it. So you're not in a situation where all of a sudden you, you know, you get into onto the stage and, um, you know, nobody knows what's going on or the choreography of, of the one -er is off. Um, you know, you just have to have to really pay attention to everything and make sure you got things covered. So that's a uh, Christmas chaos two day shoot budget. Um, now, as with the scheduling program or the scheduling process, there are other programs out there that are available, uh, some for free, some inter entertainment partners has movie magic um, budgeting as they have movie magic scheduling. Um, I thought I, I, I uh, for some reason, I don't have movie magic budget software right now. And I don't know why I was looking for it yesterday and it did come up, but I, I found this movie magic budget. It's a PDF of, of a movie magic budget. And, and really the way movie magic works or its base philosophy is you enter in your global data. So you spend time within the program entering in the rates for the crew, um, the, the pension and health percentages. This, you know, this is typically a bigger project. It wouldn't necessarily use movie magic on, on a Christmas chaos. It's, it's probably overkill. But let's say you're gonna budget a, a bigger project. Um, and and, and the, 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 the backbone or the, the, the founding, foundation philosophy of movie magic budgeting is, is global data. You enter your global data. How many days are you gonna shoot? Uh, what are the rates for each uh, crew member or, 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 or category? Um, what are, like I said earlier, your, your pension and health percentages like SAG, you know, is 20%, uh, DGA is 19. Uh, what is your, uh, your, you know, local, if you're working in the state of Washington, what is your payroll expenses? In other words, um, social security, uh, uh, your unemployment tax, um, your various costs that go uh, on your payroll taxes. So you enter all that information in. And as you, as you enter that, then you go through the program and you, you, you basically plug in what global data is necessary to determine a number and it does all the calculating for you. Uh, so you don't have to, you're not going through like you're creating formulas and, and summing up things and, and so forth. The formulas are all built. You're just entering the data to, to, to get to the final number. So on this, this particular budget, um, it's from 2012. It's, I don't even remember the project, but it's a 14 day shoot. Uh, you know, it has in the program are places to enter various information about, you know, producer, director, who did the budget. Um, looks like it, uh, cast breakage 
Okay, so there, there's an interesting term here. This does not include cast breakage for writer or director. Um, breakage, I don't know where the term comes from, but um, it basically says if, if you budgeted, like in this case, uh, they budgeted $2,500 for, for their leads. If all of a sudden um, uh, Kevin Costner reads the scripts and calls up and says, oh, I love this script. I want to be in the movie, but I want $50,000. Now, Kevin would want $5 million, but let's just say it's, you know, it's somebody you really want. You go back to the studio or to the, 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 uh, the funding entity, the, the investors, and you say, hey, look, we got an opportunity to get Kevin Costner, but it's going to be 50 grand. That's called breakage, and they say, "Yeah, you, you can get, you can, you you can have an extra fifty, you can have extra fifty thousand dollars to uh, to get Kevin Costner." Um, so this this uh, program again, it just it has all the elements in there, and you, and you plug in your data, and you end up giving your getting your above the line, your below the line. Uh, you know, here's your total below the line, total above and below. Fringes, when they refer to fringes, this particular program, um, like if over here on our, our budget, we're going to basically, it's probably not technically legal, but these people are all doing us a favor. We're going to basically pay them cash or pay them, you know, as a 1099 employee, um, a contract employee, which technically they, they really aren't because those rules of W-2 employee and 1099 employee, um, basically a 1099 employee is only somebody like an independent contractor where you say, I need you to do this job. Like let's say in, in the art department, the, um, we said we, we hired um, uh, Chris to make us a, one of these funky set pieces that sits on the stage. And we just said, Chris, you know, I got 50 bucks, make me this funky set piece and I, I need it um, three weeks from Wednesday. She, that could be an independent contractor. She's, uh, she's using her own tools, she's her own scheduling. I'm not telling her when she has to be there, what to do, how to do it. She's just doing this project for me. That's a 1099, that's legit, that's, uh, that's all legal. Anytime you're telling a, an individual to show up at this specific time, at this specific place, and this is the job you're doing and, and I'm, I'm managing you, um, that's a W-2 employee. We technically should be paying all these people as W-2 employees and paying payroll taxes on it. Um, we're gonna, because it's a, uh, you know, it's a friends helping friends project, we're gonna, you know, hope we get, and we're gonna get it. We know, nobody's, nobody's gonna report you, you, you know, there's not gonna be any problem. Um, but that's the realities of this. We should probably add, you know, 15 to 18% to each one of these co these you know, employees, these people to cover payroll taxes, but we're not going to. Um, that's called fringes. The fringe, uh, fringe are um, payroll taxes, pension and health payments, and those type of stuff. Uh, Movie Magic calculates those as a separate line item for each account. Uh, I'll show you in a little bit. I generally uh, account for them with each individual. Um, so that, that's, that's basically a look at kind of the way movie magic now, now a, a bigger budget for me, this, this is a, a budget I did this fall for a project that didn't happen. It's called dangerous. Uh, I don't even, to be honest, I don't even remember the, the script. Um, it's a 20 day shoot. It's SAG, DGA, IOTC and Teamster. Um, I did the budget on 9, 19, 2020. Um, so for these bigger budgets, I have, and, and because I'm building a budget that has, uh, calculates what would be available, available from Washington Filmworks as a, as, a, as a rebate, I calculate a variety of things. I have my total Spokane budget, and then I carry a column, I build from the beginning with an actuals column so that if, if this project were to happen and, and as we go into production, then I would track my actuals in this column, and and let's let's just say um, we get uh, we get going, and the producer says, you know what, I'll 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 do it for seventy five thousand. It was after after we have a locked budget, the budget's all done, and the producer comes along and says, you know what, I'll reduce my fee by seventy five thousand. 
I'll plug my actual in and then, then I can track if I'm under or over. If I'm under budget, it's in black. If he comes along and says, you know what, I want 125,000 and, and we give him 125,000, now I'm $25,000 over budget. So this allows me to track my under and over as I go along. Um, right now, in this case, I'm just gonna leave it at, at uh, the same as the budget because this project hasn't happened. So that, become, that column becomes my under over. Then I, I look at um, what will qualify for Washington spend. Um, and I call this column the resident uh, because in, in, with the Washington Filmworks, if an individual is a resident of Washington, you can get 30% back on a rebate of 30% on whatever you spend on that individual. If the individual is a non-resident and you identify them up front, you can get 15% back. So I track my Washington spend resident, my Washington spend resident actual, my under over, then my Washington spend non-resident actual and under over. So as we go down a little bit, same, you know, our, our Christmas chaos um, followed this same kind of pattern. You got your story rights, you've got your producers. Um, and in this case, you know, they're, they're going to, I got some gas in there and that's going to be Washington spend because they're going to spend that money and they're going to, they're going to buy meals here in Spokane um, and miscellaneous producers expense that that's all money they're going to spend here. So we'll get rebate money, money on that. I've got director. Um, and then all my actors. Now, this particular budget template, I follow sort of the, um, the movie magic theory. And I, I create, I've got a global page. So I create all my globals here. Like in this case, I've got, you know, New Mexico payroll expense, Oregon payroll, Washington payroll, loan out payroll. So I've got all these different, different uh, categories that I can change. Uh, and so if, if I uh, end up, um, you know, again, if the, if the director, if the rate change in the director, that's not a good example because let, let's just say, let's say the, the budget got big enough and we went from a tier one to a tier two. So the, uh, I'm going to change all these rates. I could just change it here and it carries over and populates the main budget versus having to go in here and change all these rates. It just, it carries it over and does it automatically. So I, I've created this, this global page that allows me to do that. And I, you know, my, my notes in there, like this key set PA, it's based on a 14 hour day at $15 an hour. So I, I you know, I, I, I know I, 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 I've showed my work to myself. So I know what I'm, how I got to where I was at. These are 12 pay hour days. So um, trying to just, you know, because I do so many budgets and at the same, you know, and then, you don't always remember what you did. So I, I try to keep some notes. Um, so again, that global carries over here. And then as I build this, um, I try to get as much detail as I can. So I actually put in my prep, shoot and wrap times or, or amounts, I try to keep those separate and, and OT. <coughs> I try to put as much detail in uh, as possible so I don't miss anything. Um, it follows the same pattern. It's the production uh, office or staff and then extras and then art department. So it becomes, um, <clears throat> you know, a lot of numbers and a lot of columns. Um, but the, the detail uh, really can be helpful. Uh, <clears throat> the other thing that is helpful, we didn't, we didn't do it on our budget, but if you're going to have somebody like Rebecca do uh, the accounting, you need account codes. So as she enters uh, all of these accounts into the chart of accounts, then she knows where they go. So when when um, when we uh, pay the bill for the walkie-talkies, she knows to code it to uh, uh, the the total uh, two fifty four hundred. The, the main account is account 250, and then the sub account is 400. So she knows where to, to, to code that. Um, the other thing this particular spreadsheet does or budget does is because I'm gonna apply for Washington Filmworks, I've gone through and identified uh, uh, the various elements <coughs> that, um, or, or uh, data that Washington Filmworks needs for their application. Washington Filmworks wants to know 
uh, above the line wages, below the line wages, P and H, lodging, per diem. They want to know all these various categories of what, what they're going to amount to so that as they do um, their process of approving or disapproving it, that they know exactly where the money's uh, coming from. So, and I also track then my crew count because we have to be 75% Washington residents. And so I, this is an easy way for me to track that. And I track that by entering little codes into this column K, like that's below the line crew, that's pension and health. Uh, that's uh, MP is miscellaneous, miscellaneous purchases and rentals. So these are the, the, the items they're looking for. There's my code. Uh, and then the code carries over here. And so the, the, I built a formula that allows that number to get tracked back to here. You can see it's the sum, blah, blah, blah. And it's a big old crazy formula, but it works. Um, then I also track whether it's pre-production, production, pre-production pre is PP, production is PR, post-production is P, and then I track my individual, like this person, you know, that's a, that's a Washington resident. Uh, that's the R for resident and that's the one. So that's how I get my count. Um, you, here's uh, grip, where's grip? Oops, I'll go the other way, sorry. Um, yeah, uh, typically our key grip is Dan Meisner. Dan Meisner's from Boise, so he's a, He's a qualified below the line. He's a non-resident and that's how I track him. And then I track him in my non-resident Washington spend. So I only get 15% on him there. So I, that's a lot of data, actually a lot of information. Um, this, this makes doing the Washington Filmworks application super easy because it's all the, all the data you need for the application is already there already filled out. Um, it's also very easy to uh, screw this this um, this spreadsheet up <laughs> because you if you delete or add or manipulate a row or a column, you just got to make sure you're paying attention to the details and that you don't uh, uh, you don't delete something by mistake and then it it affects this this sheet. So it just requires sort of paying attention. Um, I don't know. That's kind of everything I got right now. Are there questions or uh, something else we want to cover? I have a question mark because uh, obviously this is really time consuming, you know, as far as, as breaking down the script and, and doing a schedule. How do you value your time in doing that? If somebody calls you and says, hey, I'm, I'm interested in getting a breakdown of this script and, and a budget, then how do you, are you, how do you charge somebody for that? I, my approach is um, I generally say, well, let, let me read the script first. Let me, let me read the project. And, and if I like it, um, I generally will say, look, I'm willing to, give you my time now with the understanding if the project goes, you're going to hire me as the UPM. Um, it's, it's, uh, I'm willing to invest my time into helping make something happen. If I like the product, if I read it and, and, and part of it's just a vibe too. If you, if you're talking to the person on the phone and you, you get a good vibe from them and it feels right and you like them, it's like, yeah, okay, I'll, I'll help you out. If I read the script and go, mm, either I don't really care for it, or it's just like, this is totally unrealistic, or I don't think this is ever going to happen, uh, just then um, it's ranged. But, but roughly, I say, look, um, I'll do a, a, a schedule uh, uh, for $1,500, a, 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 um, a budget for $1,500, or both for $25. And that's just, that's the higher end. I mean, I've done them for a thousand, or you know, I, I think I did both a schedule and a budget for a couple thousand once. I did. You remember Richie Salvatore? I did one for him ten years ago. He still hasn't paid me. Uh, <laughs> did you charge him double? Yeah. No surprise there. No surprise there. <laughs> um, 
but yeah, it's, it's sometimes it's gut and, and sometimes it's, you know, the old supply and demand comes into play. If I'm like, I had a couple during Z nation that called and I, I charged them uh, the higher end of that, you know, that more of that 2,500 to $3,000 range, because um, I just didn't have, you know, my time was limited. And if I was going to spend, you know, stay up late or get up early, I wanted to be paid. Mm-hmm. You know, I, it, it, uh, rates are, you know, in my head, I look at it and say, look, if I, if I can get 500 bucks a day for, for working on something like this, um, that's probably good. Now, yeah, and I think to do a um, to do a, a breakdown and a schedule and a budget for a script is probably five days of work. Work. So if I get twenty five hundred bucks, it feels good to me. I mean, some of it is just your your you know your own your own self worth. I know people that would say, "Oh man, no, you got to be charging a thousand dollars a day," but. You know, and some people just sometimes they don't have the money. Some people, you know, some producers call and they just, they're really upfront and say, look, I don't have any money right now. I'm just trying to get this project going. And again, if I like it, yeah, yeah, let me help you. And I got time. Let me help you out. If I don't, then I say, I got to have some money. Thank you. This has been really enlightening, especially as someone who works as your accountant to figure out how you get the information you give to me. <laughs> so thank you for spending the it's, time. It really is community. I mean, it's, it's, it's talking to people. I mean, it's, that's the best way is if, if you can, and it's rare, like, you know, this, this dangerous script I did, um, I didn't talk to anybody. I mean, I just went by, by instant, I mean, just kind of, you know, institutional knowledge, if you want to call it that, that just what, and some of it, it's, it's almost easier when it's a, a little bigger project and, you know, the, the easiest ones are when, when they just say, well, what's this going to cost me? And I, I can't say that though. Those are, those are not easy because um, you have to kind of figure out what's the sweet spot for, you know, not overspending, but not cutting something too short and what's it going to take to, to pull this stunt off or this gag off. Um, the, the easier ones are when they say, look, I, you know, they got a lot of money. I got, I got three or $4 million in, and um, you know, where are you going to spend it? How would you spend it or something like that? Because then rates are set. You, you know, you just go to the, the IOTC uh, rate sheet, the DGA rate sheet, the SAG rate sheet. They're all, you don't have to wonder, can I get Jennifer to work on this show for 50 bucks a day? Would she, I don't know if she will or not. Oh, but then <laughs> yeah, you call Jennifer up and say, Hey, look, I'm going to shoot this a little short and I'm going to shoot it, you know, the second weekend of January. And would you help me on it? I got 50 bucks. I got a hundred bucks for you. And she'll, you know, she'll say yes or no. I think that this is super helpful and it would be, it'll be super helpful for people okay who are trying to um start, figure start, out... again. start again because I, I cut out for some reason oh i said i think this will be super helpful for people who are um local or you know working on putting together something that they want to shoot for themselves but they have no idea how to figure out what it's going to cost them because i think that a lot of times i mean especially the detail that you went through with all the things because i think nobody ever thinks of all the things yeah they're, you know, they're, they're only thinking really, honestly, the people that I've talked to um, are really only thinking about equipment and they're only thinking about their camera and their yeah. lights. And they're not thinking about all the other pieces. Like, I mean, even props, they're not even thinking about that. Cause they're like, oh, well, I'll just find everything, mm-hmm. but finding everything in the moment and being on set and going, where's that thing are, are two different you know, two different things. And if you, if you spend the time preparing and really looking at everything and really breaking down the script um, and, and really, you know, going through and, and underlining or, or highlighting or whatever you're doing and figuring out all the things are what really help. Um, so, I mean, I think that's great information. I, everybody in our local film community, community should have been on this. <laughs> yeah. Well, it just, it just comes, it does comes down to detail um, and, and extracting those details from the script. 
and then organizing them uh, and then a, a com a communicating as best you can with people in the know to figure out how much is this going to cost me. For sure. There's a lot of stuff that, I mean, it seems intuitive, but it's nice to know there's a process in place for it. Like yeah. I've been breaking down scripts since I was in high school, you know, for theater and film, but I never knew the color coding system. <laughs> never even occurred to me to do things that way. So. Yeah. yeah, it becomes a quick visual, easy visual way to, to see stuff. And an excuse to use all of my Sharpies. <laughs> Yeah, there you go. <laughs> or buy new ones. <laughs> or buy new ones. Yeah. Yeah. From that miscellaneous car. Don't touch my set of Sharpies, man. <laughs> yeah, I don't think, you know, by, by scene, it really helps people too. Like, especially yeah. writers who want to direct their own stuff or, you know, they're, they want to make something that they did. They can actually look at each scene and go, what's it going to cost me to do this scene? If you've got this all broken down, then you can, you know, Especially if you've got to do things, if, if you know, you don't have the budget or the, the wherewithal to, to do it all at once, you know, if you're breaking it down, you're like, oh, I can shoot, you know, pieces of it. I don't know. I haven't seen anybody do that, but I think they should because they don't have enough money. Well, I, 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 I've kind of done a, ver I've started to do a little bit of writing and, and I know that as I'm writing, I, if I get an idea and all of a sudden it's like, you know, night exterior or you know or you know for me it's hospitals police stations trains so yeah all of a sudden it's like uh, oh, this scene needs to take place in a train it's like no it doesn't i'm not going to put it on yeah. no figure out something else so that's the easy way and yeah that's the the logical way maybe and uh, but I, uh, it's it's in my head so it's if it's in my head i can make something else up i can you know make it work someplace else and a lot of my writing now and it'll be interesting to see when i'm if i ever get done with a script and i and i put it out there and get feedback on it if everybody's gonna go wow this is really boring because you don't have anything in it but i write you know i write to with the budget in mind with with production uh process and costs in mind and so oh that's gonna be expensive or hard or that doesn't really need to be that way can i do it in a, in a simpler way so we'll see we'll see i i do a lot of the short films and um my dp last uh spring said i just don't want to do one more film where there's a bunch of people sitting around a table and it didn't occur to me that like we had necessarily done a lot of those but a lot of short films if you can get everybody in a single location for the bulk of your film, then life is easier in a lot of ways. Yeah. But it's also complicated to shoot that many people in one space, but, and also super boring for your DP, so. And also <laughs> not possible right now. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> this was before COVID. Right. We're talking 50 hour slam, but yeah. Yeah, I, I watched a, a movie um, that somebody could ask me for some feedback on. And, and they shot, they shot, uh, there was a lot of two, two person scenes, just two people in the scene, basically across from each other from a, on a desk. I mean, just facing each other, sort of like, you know, the, this right here, it's just, I'm looking at you, you're looking at me. And this was pre COVID and that's the way they shot. They, they, there was no master shot. There was no overs. It was just totally all Rebecca and then all me straight on. And, and it was like, well, maybe, I mean, yeah, it saved time and coverage. And maybe, maybe that, that actor wasn't available when this actor, they had to do it that way. First time they did it, it was like, oh, that, that's kind of an interesting creative trick. And then it was like every two person scene was done that way. And it's like, hmm, okay, okay. So I don't know. I was, that's a whole, that's a whole nother, like, you know, class like coverage, you know, help yeah. your editor out. That's, that's, a, other. that's a class Juan can teach, Juan and Peter Green. Yeah. Hey, Mark, um, I just lost myself. Um, when would you recommend, okay, so on the shorts, normally if you're the person in charge, you can make all these decisions, but let's say you're not. Let's say 
a friend of you has asked you to produce it. So when do you start involving them in questions that creatively can make your budget easier? Well, I, I think uh, I have the initial conversation, like, like kind of like you and I had from, from a creative standpoint, what do you see here? What, what do we need to know about? What's, uh, what are you trying to accomplish? Uh, to give me a sort of uh, a basis to work from. Um, and then I think after that first pass, and, and generally a lot of times the first pass in the budget is, has a lot of caveats in terms of when I go back to that, to whoever, whoever asked me to produce, um, I go back to them and say, look, you know, I had to make, here, here's some assumptions I'd make. There's many times I, I sent out a budget with a, a huge email that lists every, almost every account and said, you know, here's the assumptions I made. I assumed this actor was going to fly in from, LA. I assume this is going to be a local, blah, 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 blah. So in, in, in that process where, you know, somebody's asked me to produce a short, I think after that first pass, I would get together with them and, and go over it and say, okay, here's, here's the assumptions I make. Here's how I got to this number. Now let's talk about, does that work? And creatively, what do we, you know, what do we need to tweak or adjust or, or be aware of? And in, in then it's, it's sort of, you know, it's peeling an onion or, or drilling down in, into more detail. You start, you start with, you know, basic information and, and enough information to, to do a first pass. And then, and then you peel the next layer off and say, okay, here's, here it is now. What else do we need to know? What, how, what other details do we need to incorporate into this? Does that answer your question? Well, yeah, I kind of knew the answer. I was asking Why questions. Not? Everybody <laughs> Um, is you guys what, have if I, what, if, what if I would have said never? What if I would have said you never talk to him? You just do the budget and hand it to him. I would have chimed in and told you, uh, Mark. <laughs> um, do you ladies have any other questions either regarding the budgeting or even back from the scheduling stuff that you thought about uh, for Mark? That was so long ago. <laughs> no, it's like a week, week ago. I know. No, I mean, I think this is very informative and really helpful. And I wish a lot of people in Seattle here would uh, learn this basic stuff. <laughs> so yeah, very helpful. You know, I've been doing this as well for a really long time. You know, I, I transitioned from theater to film. And so it's, it's interesting just just even the color coding, which I mean, I've done, but I've never, you know, done it to the detail that you taught, which is, which is great because it, it just, it reiterates that I, I know what I'm doing, but it's just like, I have better tools now to do it, which is awesome. And I appreciate that. It's like, there's so many different classes out there and so many different things you're looking at to like, what, you know, what is going to help me the most? And I liked that this was really basic and this was really helpful. Good, good. I really like how you included the Washington film incentive stuff too, because yeah. I mean, you know, every film incentive is different in how they calculate it, but having it specific to us to, you know, it was just yeah. really helpful to see all how you figure all that out. Yeah. And I do, I do occasionally get some grief from LA based producers or, you know, outside of Spokane of, of, you know, why don't you do your budgets on movie magic? Why do you use Excel? And it's in it. And once I explain how it, it helps them um, if they were going to actually do the project here. It, generally, they understand. I had a, I've had a only twice where they've just insisted that I convert the Excel budget into a movie magic budget. And all right, that's it's just you know, it's just a little bit of a different layout, but that's what they're used to seeing. And 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 I think movie magic has gotten much much better at being able to calculate a a, a rebate or a, a film incentive. So. You know, it's it's been a while since I've had to do a, a movie magic budget, but um, the, the the tools are certainly there. Yeah, that program is really helpful when you are if you're do also doing their accounting through them, yeah. right? So you can get the you get the you can get all the all the rates up to date. You can get whatever incentive you're involved. They'll flop it into your program, but then their accounting payroll becomes much easier and, and streamlined that way. Yeah. So um, entertainment partners. Yeah, entertainment, entertainment partners. partners is is a you know a, becoming a, a monster in a sense of, in a good way. I mean they they do you know crew payroll, all the accounting. They've got uh, I think they've they've got synchronized or one of one of those online you know call sheets and PRs and and scheduling and everything tied together and, and they're they're pretty robust. That's a 
And in fact, uh, I think the movie magic products are becoming, they're almost starting to call them legacy, legacy projects. You go back far enough to the different uh, software versions and they become a legacy project and uh, it'd be interesting to see how long they continue to support them as we transition to more cloud-based and more you know, online-based uh, software tools. Right. Which kind of which which you kind of can get in trouble if you don't have internet <laughs> for online. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, and and there are times for us, uh, you know, if we're doing. You don't have it. Yeah, or and you don't have cell service. I mean, it seems to me like one of those early early one of the seasons early on when we were down south down at that farm. Uh, was that season season two. two or three, whatever. Yeah, just out in, the, out in the boonies and and uh, no cell, no internet. It was so peaceful in the office. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anybody got any other questions? Uh, we really want to thank you, Mark, very much for taking the time uh, and sharing your knowledge and wisdom with this group. And hopefully we can pass this on to more people so they can uh, do their short projects more in a organized and prepared manner. Thank you to our sponsors. This program is made possible by the support of a saga grant from Spokane Arts. This has been a Spokane Film Project production in association with CMTV.